Welcome back to IDSL 870, Marketing and Community Engagement. I'm Josh Bullock, and today we're going to cover the week two topics, Marketing and Community Engagement. We're going to look at a more in-depth assessment of town gown relations and, and look a little bit further to what we discussed in the sessions. We'll look at public opinion formation, or what I call reputation management for the institution, and we'll discuss branding. So this idea of community engagement and opinion formation. Community engagement and public opinion formation truly go hand in hand. And the first piece we have to look at once again is the idea of town gown relations. So to refresh your memory from the face-to-face -face session, community engagement really describes a collaboration between institutions of higher education and the broader context of the community. The goal here is that we have some kind of beneficial exchange, whether it's of knowledge and resources, it's really about partnership and reciprocity. Town gown relations refer specifically to that idea of the college campus interacting with the non-academic community that surrounds it. So although they may seem similar, town gown relations really is somewhat of a subset of community engagement, as we discussed in the face-to-face -face session. Now, we also discussed in the face-to-face -face session that town gown relations have a number of impacts. They can have an economic impact on the communities we serve and on the institution. They absolutely can have a cultural impact, and they can have an economic development impact. More importantly, faced with who we are as educational institutions, there's absolutely an educational impact. And the piece we fail to forget where a community college is involved, where a community college resides, is the quality of life impact. And we did review these in great depth in the face-to-face -face session. Now, one of the things we didn't talk about in the face-to-face -face session is the importance of monitoring town gown relations and really taking time to assess um, how do we fare in our town gown relations? Do we have a good, positive relationship with the communities that we serve? And, and does that positive relationship uh, move forward to other areas of the institution? You know, the Princeton Review publishes rankings of community colleges, and they publish rankings of community colleges with strained town gown relations. I'm sorry, communities of strained town, town gown relations. Although you know, the reality is, some would argue the methods of the Princeton Review are flawed. There really is not a president out there who would want to make that list that their institution does not have a positive and productive relationship with their community. So it really is important to find a formal means of assessing town gown relations. Um, truly, leaders' gut feelings and anecdotes are rarely an accurate assessment of town gown relations. Uh, Stephen Gavazzi of Ohio State University and Michael Fox of Mount Allison University developed what we call the Optimal College Town Assessment. It's a 16-question survey that asks questions about how people view their comfort level in the relationship with the college and their perception of the efforts made to maintain strong relationships. So the survey asks people to rate questions on a Likert scale from very negative to very positive. And based on the results, um, the relationships are placed in one of four categories. You could have a harmonious, which means you have high effort and high comfort in that relationship. You could have more of a traditional, where there's not a lot of effort, but there is a high comfort level. Or you could have conflicted, where there's high effort, but low comfort. And then finally, this idea of devitalized, where you have low effort and low comfort. It is absolutely important to regularly assess your town gown relations to ensure progress is being made and to allow you the tools to develop plans to address issues and deficiencies before they grow. Now, there are some keys to maintaining good or positive town gown relations. The reality is that communication is key to maintaining a strong town gown relationship. As a leader, it's critical that you're out and about at as many community functions as you can possibly be at. Be involved and have your listening ears on. As my grandmother would say, there's a reason we have two ears and one mouth, because we are supposed to listen twice as much as we speak. So take note on the feedback you're receiving from the community and address what you can in an impactful way. Don't just give it lip, lip service, but try to address what you're hearing in a very full way. Hold regular town halls or listening forums with the community. Um, travel, go out and have those, those uh, discussions with civic organizations, business organizations, um, just general community members. They want you to know, or they want to feel like you as a leader care about the community, that you care about more than just the college or the institution. 
communication is key, but also use public relations to your advantage. Have a schedule of developed for regularly sharing positive news with the community. Guide their perceptions before they form one of their own. I can tell you where I work at Lakeland College, we put into place a very stringent um, public relations initiative. We literally send out public relations notices on something positive at the college every single day. We talked in the opening session, the face-to-face -face session, about working with your local media sources. And I can't stress enough, as we discussed that day, that it's important to always keep them informed, especially on meaningful events and issues. Even if they're difficult issues, such as layoffs or a crime at the college, building that strong relationship with the press is going to soften the blow when something truly less than desirable happens on campus. And I've seen it firsthand. As we've had issues at our community college, through good positive relations with our media, we are able to work with them on messaging even the negative things that happen on campus. Most importantly, we must recognize that politics is simply a way of life in achieving positive town gown relations. What we hear and what others do may not always make sense to us as leaders, but don't discount it to a lack of understanding. Balancing the needs and desires of the various constituents in the community truly is an art form in itself. But recognize that the local community college is generally one of the largest entities within a community. And thus, it's open to a higher level of public, public scrutiny. And truly, we're held to a higher standards for our actions. So recognize that and operate within that framework. Let's talk a little bit about branding and public opinion formation. And these are some very, very critical, critical elements for us as community communicators, especially in today's world. With the advent of social media, with the advent of instant communication, public opinion formation and managing our brand is absolutely critical to sustaining the viewpoint in the community that we would like to have and tremendously impacts community relations or community engagement and town gown relations. So let's talk about branding a little bit. A brand represents the public's perceptions and feelings about who we are as a community college. It's our college's promise to deliver on a specific set of benefits or services, the experience, the quality that the students and the public expect from our institution. Now, there are really four parts to branding. <clears throat> there's brand positioning, there's brand name selection, brand sponsorship, and brand development. And these all come into play in helping us assess who our brand is. Now, brand positioning, you can position your brand on three various elements. The first is positioning your brand based on attributes. That means positioning your brand based on what your brand has to offer. In colleges, this is absolutely a thing that we need to consider as we're starting to think about our audience. By understanding who our publics are, who our students are, may determine whether attributes are something we want to use to position. So for instance, an attribute of a college may be that it's totally online. The University of Phoenix did a great job of looking at combining attributes with benefits, with beliefs and values. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Attributes, that idea of saying our product is available, our program is available of study completely online. That is an attribute that we could hang our hat on. Now, customers who aren't interested in, let's say, an online experience or a specific attribute of our institution, they're more interested in what the attributes can do for them. And that's where we start to talk about delivering benefits. Now, a good way to look at your institution is by delivering benefits. What are we going to do for that student? So you might see advertisements, you might see branding for an institution, um, especially the for-profits do a, a good job of this. So I'm not advocating for the for-profits, but the for-profit uh, two-year colleges do a good job of this of the benefits of their education are that it will lead to employment. Many of us as public community colleges also look at branding our institution based on the benefit of that it will, it will lead to gainful employment. Think about the taglines that your institutions use. What are you saying in that tagline? Are you telling the students that there will be a benefit to them by attending your institution? <clears throat> Finally, we can position based on beliefs and values. The strongest brands, whether it's in higher education or not, go beyond attributes or benefit positioning. 
they are positioned on strong beliefs and values. In other words, these brands base themselves on a strong emotional attachment to that customer. Let's look at higher education. When I say Harvard, what types of beliefs and values do you have about that brand? You probably don't know about their attributes or their benefits, but through time you have developed strong beliefs and values about the Harvard brand. Well, I can tell you from having experienced some, some Harvard education, at least participating in some webinars and such, that Harvard really doesn't have much more to offer than most universities or community colleges, but they've done a fantastic job of taking the beliefs and values and weaving that into a brand. Think about your own community college. What beliefs and values do people have about your college that are impacting your brand? Brand name selection can also help with the success of an institution. How might brand name selection help? Well, we've talked earlier that many community colleges have removed community from their name. We've seen community colleges that have entirely renamed themselves uh, to something that is more appealing to a community. And we've seen community colleges and universities name specific program areas or units within their, entity, their organization so that that entity might have a specific recollection. Let me give an example. At Lakeland College, the arm of our college that deals with any is called the Center for Business and Industry. And we use that exclusively, the CBI moniker, for those efforts. We've created a brand around our corporate training. We can also look at other ideas, such as brand sponsorship, where you might private label. Think about uh, some of you who might use uh, other colleges' academic programs online, and you might private brand that product as your own. You might license someone else's product. You might have a, a, an education on your campus where you're doing, let's say, the disk inventory, and you license, your organization is licensed to offer the disk. Uh, those are ways that we can look at as well, enhancing our own brand through brand sponsorship and partnership with others. There are various ways we can develop brands as well, and many of the brand development tools that are used are meant much more for the corporate world than they are for higher education. But we can still look at how branding and brand development might impact us. You might be well known in the community college for your academic degrees. But how might you extend that line of your academic degrees to corporate training to allow you to capitalize on the brand that your community college itself has developed? Branding is a very, very powerful tool. And you can read about the various branding techniques as well in the readings for this week. But I would also encourage you to go out and investigate on your own. Read as many trade periodicals as you can about the importance of branding in the community college world. <clears throat> Excuse me, I would like to talk now a little bit about reputation management. The idea of thoughtfully guiding our image. And you read a nice article on reputation management for the readings for this week. And I want to touch on some highlights with reputation management. We as institutions build our brands on our reputation. Our product, not only are the programs and services that we offer to the students who are immediately taking advantage of our educational opportunities, but our product are also the students who graduate and go to work for the local employers or transfer to the Fourier University. So it's absolutely critical that we thoughtfully consider how we can guide our image. Now, there are barriers to reputation management. There are things we shouldn't be doing that might impact us as an institution. One barrier to a positive reputation is, is the idea of competing on price alone. Price can be a great tool, and many community colleges do compete on price, but price is a secondary element that they use in promoting their college. They might use the quality of their educational uh, programs, their academic programs, and then say not only do we have quality, but we also have a lower price. If you compete specifically on price, you might 
harm the reputation or brand because people do perceive without quality that low price may mean an inferior educational experience. The other piece is lack of, dis lack of distinctiveness. Don't try to compete externally and be the same as everyone else. There are so many competitors today in higher education and there are so many community colleges. And the reality is you may feel that because you have a district, your students are really place bound, but not in today's world. With online education, with the ability to quickly and easily uh, drive 60, 70 miles, <clears throat> students are no longer limited to their local community college. Try to be distinctive in who you are. Be distinctive in your reputation and your brand. Those pieces or those things that make you unique. Let's talk a little bit about how that might work in the corporate world and how you might translate that to education. Mercedes-Benz is extremely distinct, and Mercedes-Benz has flagship models. When we think of Mercedes-Benz, we often think of the $100,000 vehicle that wealthy people drive. But Mercedes-Benz also makes vehicles that are comparable with a Ford or a Chevy in price, $35,000, $45,000. But they are known for the quality of that high-level vehicle. That's market distinctiveness. What is your community college going to be known for? And the third barrier to reputation is fragmented markets. The reality is that we serve a variety of markets in higher education, and their needs are different. The of our organization in each of those groups is different. We'll talk much more about this when we talk about target marketing. But think. Think about how you address the adult learners in your What's their perception of your college? The standard 18-year-old high school student graduating and considering moving on to your community college. How do they view your community college? Although we don't want to necessarily fragment our markets, we do want to segment and target those markets and develop offerings and ways to approach those markets that align with our institution's mission and values. And we'll get more into that in future lectures. The second barrier is the internal. The internal barriers are also something that can impact all of us and are probably much more readily apparent to us as internal to the organization. An underdeveloped branding strategy. Think about those entities that you cringe that their tagline sounds like every other community college's tagline. Their logo looks like every other community college's logo. The heart of our reputation is our branding strategy. That is how we capitalize on how we're known in the community or what we want to be known for in the community. So make sure you work with a strong marketing team so that you don't have an underdeveloped brand marketing strategy. You have a brand marketing strategy that capitalizes on the things you do well and hopefully enhances those things that you don't. One of the big barriers to reputation management is a resistance to innovate within the organization. Educators, as much as we train folks to try new things, we're not real good at change management. We're not very good at adapting to change. We resist change. And that impacts our ability to innovate. When you lack the ability to innovate and people fear innovation, you're going to be stuck in the rut that you may have been stuck in for years. The other, ability with the, the other ability with the organization's ability to innovate is how many of your organizations have red tape, have multiple committees that something will need to go through before it actually gets approved. That's part of the hierarchy that we've built in higher education to keep ourselves from innovating, to keep ourselves from adopting things to move forward and really to maintain the status quo. And probably the, one of the most important barriers to reputation is to reputation management is this growing notion and this growing pressure on entities to become profitable. And I'm not using profitability in a corporate sense, but as, as organizations, we don't want to run deficit budgets. And as we see a reduced reliance in the organization on state or federal funding, we realize that tuition is becoming more and more of a source of funding for an institution. 
And that funding means there's a pressure to become profitable or to break even. That pressure and that skepticism surrounding profitability can impact our ability to, to maintain or manage our reputation. I hope you enjoy the readings for this week and I hope you give serious consideration to the idea of how you and your community college can impact town gown relations. You might not be a vice president or a senior leader, but every individual in the organization is a leader and every individual can have an impact on town gown relations. I also hope you'll give serious consideration to the reputation that your organization hails within the community and the district you serve. What does your brand tell your students? What does your brand tell the community? And what does your brand tell those potential students who may want to attend your, your college but simply don't know enough about it or have a wrong perception? That's all we have for you today. I hope you've enjoyed this brief lecture and farewell for now.